Hey guys, thanks for joining us back out here at the Range Report. And here we are at Point Blank Range in Matthews, North Carolina. And today we've got a couple of different guns that we're going to be reviewing for you. And today we're going to start off with, this, with the next generation Sky CPX2 9mm pistol. Now you guys might remember a couple of years back we reviewed for you guys the CPX3 380 from Sky. Now this was the first gun that introduced what they called the quad lock system or the Roebuck quad lock system. And what it was said to do was improve accuracy by having the barrel make contact with the slide in four different positions so that as the round went off, it was the most stable platform that it would fire from. Now, we did a lot of shooting with the Sky CPX3, and we have to say it was true. This was probably one of the most accurate, compact 380s that uh, we had had ever fired up until that day. And with a price point of around 275 bucks MSRP, pretty damn good value as well. We did have a couple of gripes about the gun, naturally. You know, nothing is suited for everybody. And one of the things that we had complained about was the finger wells in the grip module. And we also complained about the takedown pin. Uh, we thought that the takedown pin should be th drilled through so that you could push it through from one side rather than having to pry it out from one. And we felt that the, the finger wells on the grip module didn't make this a universal fit. It kind of just prescribed this more or less for people with very small hands and would kind of put my people like myself out of the market because of the way my hand fit on the gun was a little uncomfortable. I was still able to fire it with no problem, but just a little uncomfortable. Well, Sky addressed at least one of those issues in the next generation by offering the line of grip modules that don't have the finger wells with it. Now this is the new generation CPX2 and 9mm and this one is also now just like the rest of the Skyline featuring the Roebuck quad lock system which makes the gun according to Sky inherently more accurate and more reliable because again more contact points with the slide as the round goes off it produces a more stable platform from which to fire from. Now <clears throat> we ran about uh, about 30, 30, 45 rounds for this thing so far. All right, now, my one of my gripes was resolved with the fact that the finger wells are now gone, and this gives me a little bit more of a comfortable platform. Uh, right now, the mag out, of course, everything is, you know, we're safe and unloaded. And with the mag in it, they have the pinky extension on it, so I get two and a half finger contact on it. Smaller hands will get three. Uh, we did notice an issue as far as myself when firing the 380 version now these guns are almost identical in every way as far as uh, size goes size weight length is just a quarter inch difference between them we noticed that the cpx3 has got a lot more of a curve in the trigger now the cpx2 is this is a curved trigger as well but it seems to have less curve in it than the CPX3 is. Now, you'd say, well, what difference does it make? Well, this is a double action only pistol. And, you know, flat face triggers are, are the rage when it comes to strike a fire because you get that nice short reset and you're able to fire it quickly. But what I just learned with this is given the smaller size of the gun lends itself to a very small uh, trigger housing. So as I squeeze this trigger, and having less of a curve, trying to overcome the force of that seven and a half to nine pound trigger squeeze that this is you know, fluctuating between, my finger is being pushed down into the trigger guard and it's rubbing really severely on the top of my finger. Now, when you're trying to squeeze off a couple of rounds and your finger is getting pushed down, you now not only are you overcoming the force of the trigger pull itself, but now you're also dealing with the friction feel that you have right here at the bottom of the trigger well. So uh, for me, it's not exactly the most comfortable gun to shoot. We were running rounds pretty accurately. Uh, I would personally, if you're going to have a curved trigger on a double action gun, like to see as much curve as you can put on there, just so it helps nest your finger into the trigger a little bit and it doesn't force your finger to go downward. Now, I wish there was some way that I could demonstrate this for you where you could actually see how red the, the, my finger is. Now, 
you, you know, you know, uh, we love Sky Pistols, and there's no two ways about it. Sky has a unique niche in the market. They make a really good quality product for you know the budget price that it is. It's made in America. They're great guns, great customer sat- you know, uh, you know, customer service, great warranties on them. But when we find that there's an issue, we have to we have to address it. So for somebody with hands my size, maybe not the best choice. Somebody with smaller hand size. You have to be strong enough to overcome that seven to ha- seven and a half to nine pound trigger pull that this is currently firing. Now, we're going to run a couple magazines through it. We're going to show you the results of uh, our group, and you guys can determine for yourself. So right now, just for the you know for the the, the sake of a good memory, we're going to run a couple rounds through the CPX three and uh, just bring that one back to life for a minute. Now the CPX3 is also double action only. All right, so we just wanted to run a few rounds through that just so that we could have a little comparative distance, a uh, difference. Now as I fire that round through this thing, my finger does not touch the bottom of the trigger guard at all. It completely cleared it, comfortable to shoot. Now, we're going to take the CPX2 and do the same thing. We're going to run one magazine through this and then we're going to change camera positions and put it here so that you can see right next to the gun as I'm firing it so maybe you can see what we're talking about. So I'm going to shoot for center target and try and keep my rounds right in there. Now, I don't know if you'd be able to pick up on camera, uh, maybe not, I doubt it, but my finger is pretty red right there. If I kept firing this, I know that I would be either opening up the cuticle or I'd be getting calloused on it. The other problem is my shot placement is suffering because of it, because not only am I having to try and readjust my trigger finger, but my pinky is also sliding off the, the, the list part of the magazine right there. It's still just not enough contact for my hand. Now we're going to reposition the camera. I'm going to try and get this thing so you can see what it's doing. Uh, and, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to emphasize it with my own actions. You're just going to see it. I'm going to shoot naturally and you can see what it's doing in my hand and you guys can judge for yourself. I'm going to fire it one handed so that you get the best view possible. So we'll change positions and another couple rounds through. All right, we put the camera on the other side of the bulletproof glass so that you can see from a side angle what's happening with my hand when I'm firing the firearm. Unfortunately, the microphone is going to be pretty muffled from that position, so I'm going to show you, tell you what we're going to do now, show it to you, and then we'll, we'll revisit this position. So we're going to spin the camera around, one-handed shooting with the CPX2. All right, now I'm not, I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick the sound up from this, but we're going to go now. We get ready. Now you can see right here that even with the extended magazine, I'm just barely getting one more finger on it. Now when my finger goes on the trigger, as soon as I make contact, you see that I'm automatically filling the, the, the whole well right there. Now as I try and squeeze back my finger, you'll watch what happens. All right, now as you can see from, from that, every time I squeeze the trigger on the gun, my finger is being forced down further and further into the trigger guard. Now that's really between rubbing on it and then having your finger in there as the gun recoils is presenting a little bit of a painful situation for me. Now, 
is that a is that a deal breaker for the gun? Uh, look, if if it's a gun that you're going to carry, we always feel that you have to be very proficient with it, which means you have to shoot a lot with it. And if you're not going to be comfortable with the gun, you're not going to shoot a lot with it. If a gun is uncomfortable to fire, a gun is uncomfortable to to manipulate, or the gun hurts in any way, you're probably not going to enjoy shooting that gun a lot, which means that you're not going to be proficient when the time calls that you may be need, needing that gun to you know, get a job done. So I think what Sky would need to do with this particular firearm is either curve that trigger a little bit more, open up the, uh, the trigger guard a little bit, maybe thin it out so there's not, not as much fat right there to catch your finger. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe put a little bit more of an extension of a lip on that uh, on the magazines. I'm not really sure. Now, as far as accuracy goes, look, the, the damn gun is accurate. There's no two ways about it. The gun is accurate, and squeezing the trigger, it's got a really smooth trigger, a really nice break. It's crisp, it's clean, but it hurts as far as, far as I'm concerned. Now, uh, look, Sky sent the gun to us. Uh, you know, this is the second one that they that they've sent, and we, after weighing the the differences between the two, we kind of enjoy the 380 a lot more because it doesn't hurt as much to shoot it. Uh, I think what we want to do is we want to get in contact with Sky, and we would like to get one of their striker fired guns in house. Now we have originally requested that they send us the uh, flat face short set reset RMR, but they sent us this one instead. Uh, we wanted to do a striker fire comparison, and this being the budget version of the striker fired guns, but we're kind of glad that it worked out this way uh, because we were able to see the differences between uh, not only the generations but the calibers. And I, I, I think Sky might, might you know, it, with a little bit of work, they have a good, they have a really, you know, good, good winning gun here. Uh, just for somebody like myself or people with larger hands or. Big fat sausage fingers, maybe not so much. But uh, anyway, listen, thank you guys for joining us out here at the Range Report. And we encourage you to hit like, and subscribe, and all the rest of that good stuff. Uh, the more you guys that join us in the comment section, you know, the merrier we try to reply to everything. So if you are familiar with the Sky brand and you, you have one, like it, dislike it, engage in some conversation. Uh, maybe you know something that we don't. And uh, until then, you guys be safe, shoot straight, and... Have a good one.